This is Elton Brown, former Arizona Cardinal, two-time All-American at the University of Virginia, and you're watching Legacy Maker Sports Network. Legacy Maker, the All Sports Network. Commonwealth Sports Talk, Season 5, Episode 6, with your host, Joe Dillard Jr. This week's special guest, John Harris, Fairfax High School assistant football coach and former Virginia State and Highland Springs football star. Welcome to Commonwealth Sports Talk. My name is Joe Dillard, bringing you back another episode as we have Season 5 rolling smooth along. This guest comes out of the football realm, out of the B-State realm, out of the city of Richmond realm, as we've got Highland Springs graduate, VSU graduate, Fairfax assistant coach John Harris joining us today to talk football 101 and VA love. Again, this podcast is designed to spread knowledge, teach and inform the listener and viewer about the positive advancement of Virginia athletes born or raised and definitely born and raised. Again, this podcast is brought to you by Legacy Maker Sports, Grind and Pray, and those at Commonwealth Sports Talk. Let's go. Welcome to Commonwealth Sports Talk as we have John Harris, Fairfax assistant coach here. Highland Springs alumni, VSU alumni, the man has been in the state of Virginia from the root to the tooth and still giving back. So welcome to the show, my man. How you doing today? Man, I'm glad to be here, man. That's about as simple as we keep it, too, especially when we're in this best state of Virginia, ain't it? Oh, exactly. Exactly. And I'm just glad that everybody else is starting to see it, too. Yes. You know, in, in every sport. In every Absolutely. Sport. Absolutely. Yeah. So... I want to jump right into it. I, I've already given you your intro, you know, football background, deep in the root, going all the way back to Highland Springs. Mm-hmm. So they know who Highland Springs is now. But talk <laughs> yeah. to me about Highland Springs all the way through. Like, what kind of system create? What, how, do you, how are you created as a football player coming out of that area? Growing up in Highland Springs, I knew I wanted to play from, from the get-go, man. I had guys that I looked up to. Um, you know, guys like Tom Haskins, guys like Jim Davis, you know, all, all of these guys were guys that made me want to play. Um, and then, you know, even when I got to high school, being able to play with guys like Nolan Burchett, you know, it was just one of those things where it was just, you know, it wasn't rooted in our blood. And, and I, and like I said, it's every sport, you know, it's not just football, but, you know, when you're a football player in Highland Springs, you know it when you're six years old. That's what I know. And that's what I was going to say, too. Like, what's in the water? Because they know, like, I'm going to give you a little side, gym. I work with the city of Richmond, Park mm-hmm. and Rec, and I, you know, dumped myself into that environment and mm-hmm. fell in love with a couple of springers, mm-hmm. you know. And these boys looked apart since the day I met them. And now that I see them growing up older now, going into their senior year, like, Oh my God, Daquan is killing it. He's a quarterback yeah. for Highland Springs. Oh, yeah. I saw him when he was in eighth grade, seventh grade, yeah. but he looked like yeah. a football player. And Absolutely. I was like, yo, bro, if you don't get somewhere, shame on you. And he started yeah. laughing. I said, no, I'm serious. You better do what you got to do and get yeah. to the next level. I mean, a lot of it is the parents. And, you know, Highland Springs is, yeah, it's in Richmond, but it's a small town and those parents care. 
You know, my parents, you know, drop me off, pick me up, take me to the weight room, take me to training sessions. And, and then you get around those coaches that are there now and even the coaches that I had. But, you know, you, you know, Lauren, who's a legend and guys like Puka, I mean, you know, it's no excuse to fail, you know, and I'm happy that, that it's like that in Highland Springs. That, that makes me happy to still see them rolling like that. Yeah, we need more guys like you who experience that in the coaching realm because that is what has to get passed forward, that mind frame, but but being able to trigger a young man into that that realm, you know, because essentially you could go on deaf ears sometimes and be spitting the best verbiage, best, you know, football one-on-one talk, but if he doesn't hear it, it's not going to get to him. So talk to me about, a little bit about that. Like, how do you combine some of the old school ways – Mm-hmm. with relating to these young bucks one one thing that hasn't changed from the late 90s and early 2000s when i played to now is that kids want to play for people that they trust and um my first like honestly like my first mentor as far as coaching goes was richard mcphee you know the longtime legend at huguenot high school and he taught me that you know those kids from huguenot trusted him So when he was hard on them, they knew it was coming from love and not from, oh, coach doesn't like me. And so for me, you know, just kind of long story short, like every goal that those kids have, whether it's play D3, D2, D1, when they set those goals, I I hold them to it, you know. And so when I get on those kids, because I am hard on them, right, I'm a player's coach, but I'm really hard on them, but they know why, though. Because exactly. they understand that it's their goal, not not just mine. It's my goal for them because that's their goal. Absolutely. And I think once the kids trust that you really are like that, they'll do whatever you ask them to do. I, look, I, I'm a big believer in that. And that's why I said there needs to be more coaches in that realm like that, that, that has that mindset. So we go from Highland Springs to VSU linebacker crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm talking. Hey, look, first of all, I had I've already had PJ Adams on here. I've oh, already man. had Bernard Coma on here. Oh man, look, Dennis, that, I that, had look, Bernard name. was fast, fast. You hear me? You, Say that one more time. About, talk about being a freshman trying to catch that dude, man. <laughs> Good luck. Bernard <laughs> is fast, bro. Yeah. Like I saw it every day at track. <laughs> I saw it every day at track. I used to look at him, I'd be like, that big block runs fast and plays running back. Oh, he's yes, built for tough. Shout oh, out to man. you, Bernard. Just got to throw it if you see it. Shout out to no you. No doubt. No doubt. That's crazy, bro. Like, And so let me just speak on that real quick because PJ's coaching, you're coaching, Bernard's coaching, Ty's There's coaching. There's so many people. You Dennis can do this coaching. whole, you can do this whole coaching. interview talk about people from Virginia State that's in the game, man. Coy Brown, shout out to him down in Tennessee. Keep like everybody. talking. Yeah, that's what we do. We give our lot of us. Yeah. So look, talk about this though. How we all hyper majors, how we all was in sports, how we all in sports now. Mm-hmm. You see how this world leading us right now is pretty self, you know, but it's not just you. You know, I, I took that exact same route. We stayed in Virginia. Um, you you would think that you would have stayed in Richmond, you'd have think I'd have stayed in the 757, but mm-hmm. we stayed in Virginia because we know the heartbeat. Talk to me about this Northern Virginia heartbeat right now, too, because Northern Virginia's football circle is different from yours and it's different from mine, but Mm -hmm. it's still Virginia football. So at the end of the day, talk to me a little bit about that, that, that that change, because I want to see if you say what I'm about to think out loud. I'm going to be honest, coming from Richmond to Northern Virginia, whether it had been at Woodbridge or you know, Hilton or, you know, North Stafford. Now I'm at at, uh, Fairfax. The discipline is something that is unbelievable in Northern Virginia. You, you know, like these kids are motivated. They want to make it. They, you know, you don't have to really talk to them about staying off the street as much and come on, get in this weight room. You know, I'm an early bird. Those kids waiting on me sometimes. And I'm like, man, I'm an hour early, you know? And that is the thing that I think is starting to, You know, and I'm not going to say catch up, but to some degree catch up. Right. Because the world knows about the 757 and people been knowing about Richmond for a long time. But if you look on this ESPN uh, or the 24-7 pages now, you're starting to see a lot of those kids from Fredericksburg and up now. 
And hey, a look, lot of it is because of the discipline. I got two names for you. And I know you know him because I'm 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 pivoting right to this camp you was at. So mm-hmm. I'm going with Travion Henderson. Yeah. Blake Corum. Yeah. Ohio State. Yeah. Michigan. Yeah. Straight out of Virginia. Straight out of Virginia. So how yeah, was that I was camp? Saying, yeah. I mean, what? I mean, you know, those kids. Uh, there are a lot of kids that are like them right now. That's about to walk into ninth grade for the first time. Yep. You know. It's a lot of rising freshmen. You you want to know what I was going to tell you, Coach Harris? I was going to tell you that it's three levels of football here. You uh, you didn't hit that wavelength. That's Mm -hmm. totally different Mm -hmm. than Richmond and 757. We got Mm -hmm. JV and varsity. Mm -hmm. They know more. Some areas and pockets got eighth graders playing JV. That's, that's That's an advantage. Right. Um, some of them don't have middle school football. Some of them do have middle school football. But up here, you have, from my expectations in Prince William, I've seen middle school football, freshman football, JV football, and varsity football. Absolutely. That's and, and I and I take it a step further. The recreation football, the youth league football, is absolutely Great. amazing up here. I mean, these I could name a bunch of these these guys, but I mean. A lot of people are coming to high school now ready to play varsity football because there are such an abundance of quality rec league coaches now. Yes, yes. Shout out to Jeff Fairman out there of Grizzlies, Gainesville mm-hmm. Grizzlies. He's one that's been doing it too, among others that are out there doing their thing. But to consistently keep kids ready and prepared is an understatement. Mm-hmm. It's truly Probably. an understatement because the number one thing is said about rec coaches – Oh, that's somebody's daddy. And then, or two, he just out here for his own recognition. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you yeah. ain't really getting no clout as a rec coach unless you just really passionate about the progression and the process. Absolutely. You know, I mean, obviously Absolutely. you got a starting point, but if you stay, that's that's the passion and the progress there. Absolutely. I 100 percent agree. And, 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 and shout out to those guys for the patience they have for some of those little guys, <laughs> little guys, man, five, six years old. But they get them ready. Like I see six year olds call cadences out with confidence. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that's what that's what the that's what rinse, wash and repeat does for you. Absolutely. And I'll take it, you know, a little step further. Those are the same kids that don't mind raising their hand and answering questions in the classroom. Yeah. Yeah. They are getting that, these kids, too. I can't even lie know, about that. Yeah. You know, when you, when that kid doesn't mind calling out a cadence so he doesn't mind breaking down at the end of practice, that same kid has that same confidence when he walks in the classroom. And that's what a lot of people don't see. Exactly. So talk to me a little bit about your thought process when you was deciding or wanting to come to Fairfax like how mm-hmm. how, how did that all come to fruition and, and and coming into that situation man I'm gonna be totally honest with you man and I gotta shout him out Dardell Parker was a big reason why I chose to go to Fairfax um you know him and I became friends um you know when he was fresh out of college he came to North Stafford and I thought he was an amazing young coach. He was so much more mature than your average 21, 22-year-old. And he really knew what he was doing. He could coach a bunch of different positions. But what I really liked is he was interested in helping those kids get recruited. And so me and him kind of clicked right away. We clicked right away. And I kind of showed him how some things work. And he just took it. And he did his own thing. And, and you know, it made me feel so good to see him go to Fairfax and you know, Tony Rojas, shout out to him. You know, yep. he, he helped them out so much with his recruiting. And, and then for me to finally meet Tony Rojas, I'm like, man, like, it was just like, wow, dude, like, there you go. You know, you you really doing it. And I've always had respect, um, you know, for Trey Taylor, you know, yes. so it just it just made it an, an easy decision for me. You know, and I and I love those kids in North Stafford, all of them. Had a great four year run there, um, you know, two regional championships. But, you know, it was time to move on. And I'm happy to be back in 6A football. That's look, that is something that is no slouch in general. 6A football. I'm glad you said that. You know, every area outside of Northern Virginia doesn't get the opportunity to just talk 6A only because mainly 
the schools are four, five, six spread it out up amongst counties. Mm -hmm. If you have a six A out there, Chesterfield's like that. Mm -hmm. New Hampton's like that. Uh, Newport News is like that. Virginia Beach right. is like that. They'll have fours. They'll have fives. They'll have sixes. For the most part, there's about eighty five percent six A up here from yeah. Prince William County all the way up. All the way up. Absolutely. 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 I'm not. I, I call it. I call it Washington Post football. That's <laughs> you hit it right. Yeah, you hit yeah. it. Yeah. That's when you get into but, that. but that was it, man. And you know, from the first time I visit uh that campus and, and I saw them lift weights and I saw them work, I said, This is a place where I'll fit in, you know, yeah. and I watch it every single coach work, man. And and you know, like for me, it's not about an ego, oh, I'm here now, and that kind of thing. I'm watching every coach get after it, and it's like, man, it's you know, it's it's almost like an all-star team, even in the coach's office. You, you sure know, you ain't go for that blue turf? Hey, I'm going to tell you something, man. This is the first time in my 17-year career that I've ever coached a team that's going to play a home game on some turf. My man, I turned – because we played our fall league games there for basketball. I turn that corner and I look at it every time like – Yeah. And then y'all don't have the goal post up. I know you asked about well, that. You know what? It's funny you say that. We put it up today. See? We put it, we put it up today. My yes, first sir. thought. On the Northern Virginia experience coming to Fairfax, I'm like, these kids tear down field goal posts out here that they got to get rid of it <laughs> off season. I, I promise you, yeah. that was my first thought for Fairfax High. I was like, that makes sense, but that's my only explanation oh, yeah. for not having the post. Oh, yeah. We put those goal posts up right after workouts today. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Like the, the aura there is amazing. That's, mm -hmm. that's crazy, bro. So, like, we're opening the year with Wakefield on the 26th. Absolutely. That's within 30 days now. So the boys got it circled, I'm, I'm supposing, right? Oh, oh, absolutely. 100%. Uh, they have it circled. They feel like they have something to prove. And us as coaches, we feel like we have something to prove. And, and like you hit on earlier, so many good teams in Northern Virginia – you know, we're out to prove, hey, we're amongst those good teams. You know, we, we belong with the Madisons and the Battlefields and the Freedoms because we are that caliber of team. And, you know, the only way to do it is to go out there and prove it. That's you, – you know what it's all about. So what all are you coaching with them? Like, do you have a specialty assignment yet? Or are you just coming along? Man, you know, they can call me whatever they want to call me, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm working with the D-line primarily. You know, um, we all work together, man. You know, you, when it's offensive line stuff. You play for Coach you know, Belichick. I'm, I'm doing my best. Belichick got uh, everybody. But, hey, look, I'm yeah. going to speak great about this. Every, when everybody's you know. in one court, you said, yeah, what's the mean, title? It's just, it's just so many talented coaches. You know, you've got guys that's been doing it for 40 years okay. in that coaching room. you got guys fresh out of college. It's just so many, you know, guys that know what they're doing that we really don't tie anybody into one thing now obviously everybody has one thing they're in charge of but you know we all just get out there together and you know our, our, our offensive meetings you know I'll sit in there defensive meetings the offensive coordinators you know Darnell he'll sit in there so you know man we, we all just in there working together man you know uh right. it's not a thing where we get a win and it's like Trey wins <laughs> you know we all get the W so I love it but hey, but 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 you know my passion is always with that D line, so I, that's know. what I figured. Yeah, I figured that technique, that approach. There's some dogs down there, so you gotta you gotta have oh, yeah. a certain mindset when you be down there, and, and oh, that's yeah. just how my train of thought was in general too, with my experience with them. So, my man, Lawrence Kershaw, mm -hmm. talk to me about that name and give me a story, please. Oh, I gotta give you one. I got to give you one. Now, before I tell you the story, I'm taking I love Coach Kershaw, man. He taught me how to work. I thought I knew how to work when I got to college. I thought I had the best work ethic ever. Man, he taught me how to work. Because when that man say be in the weight room at 545, he really mean 535. And if I got in there at 535, he was already in there sweat getting his workout in. So I'm going to tell you this quick story. And I, I don't even know if you remember, but I remember. Man, it's 2001, and I'm just trying to get on the bus, man. I'm, you know, I'm working. Man, I get in there, and I think at this point, it's, he opened the door, but then he went into his office, and I'm in there, man, and I'm playing my old-school Master P. You know, I'm 
lifting weights. I'm, I'm trying to lift before the older veterans get in there. And Coach Kershaw walk in the door. Hey, 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 cut this country stuff off, man. And he put on Dear Max, man. And I'm looking at Coach Kershaw like, well, guess he just changed the channel. <laughs> I'm not messing with that dude. I'm not gonna say much to that guy, man. No, oh, man, gonna... I got so much respect. Man, I'm so glad that he back up with Gene State, man. That when I it warmed my heart when I read that. Yeah, I thinking, like that. I didn't even play for him, and it warmed me when I saw him come back home. That made me have more pride with our alma mater to be. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we got and a brand new field coach, coming. Though, Joe, not only was he a good coach. Not only did he know every single person on the team, he had a specific relationship with every person on the team. That's he how you say something about everybody that he ever coached, and that's why I always like that. That's how you got to do it. Uh, that's exactly how you got to do it, man. But what do you think about that upgrade coming? You know there's new turf, new stadium upgrades coming. We got to go check that out. Hey, look, absolutely, man. Look, I'm always looking for a reason to go to homecoming, and homecoming on my birthday this weekend, so I'm, I'm all for it. You know, this year, yeah, man, look, this year I'm looking for a reason. I got a couple guys I used to coach that's playing that state, man. And, and I'm happy, man. Every time I go, I see that new gym. I know you've seen the new gym. I mean, I, but, but look, I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> brand new gym, brand new tennis court, brand new softball field since we've arrived. Mm-hmm. They ripped the track up now. It's about to be orange, I believe. In the really? Blue. Yeah, the, the field's going to be turf blue. The track is going to be orange. Oh, wow. Track coach that. is telling me about that. So I, I'm going to hold them to it. Yo, I, I got I to see that. Can't beat that, man. I, I think the MIAC might be blowing our phone up soon. We and that is what like that. I just need that <laughs> one at the end of our title. Yeah. I don't even care how we get it. Even if, well, I do care how we get it. <laughs> 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 oh man so look mm-hmm. the last gym we got to share mm-hmm. health physical education and recreation mm-hmm. we up in the same ceiling third mm-hmm. floor taking classes together how tightly knitted was that bond there and what did it teach you to be able to be a good teacher and to be relatable to people at all the stops you've had man it's funny you ask me that man and, and this is something that i talked about the other day with a good friend of mine kenny painter i remember sitting in class dr person and Shout you know I, I love dr person man I and, and I, I just remember sitting there and i'm listening and she said something that stuck with me to this day that i use every day when i teach and she basically said when you're teaching no matter who you're talking to Explain it as if you're talking to a second grader so that they clearly understand what you're saying and they do exactly what you want them to do. And I remember me and Paint looked at each other like, it's so simple, but yeah, <laughs> like, the exactly simplify it. Because a lot of times, the more that we learn, sometimes we can talk over people's head, especially when we're talking to younger people who are novice to what we're trying to teach them. But when you when you kind of just explain it to them in, in just a simplified way, Great. then they get it. And then you can make it more and more and more difficult once they get the, you know, they grasp Great. what you're trying to teach them. And, uh, I, you know, I mean, obviously, I, I love everybody, man. You know, Dr. Reese, I mean, just everybody. But Dr. Reese, person, person, doc, Dr. All of person them. At, at first, honestly, you know, being young, I was 17 when I got to state. I really didn't think she liked me at first. It kind of took me a couple of years to realize she was pushing me because she saw something in me. And that meant All a lot. Business. I told you that when I graduated. Absolutely. All business. Absolutely. She, I mean, I took a softball officiating class and you would have thought I was taking physiology as hard as she made that class. But it's because she just didn't want me to get lazy. And I respect that. That's how it worked, though. She know where the gyms are. That's how that works. That's I think they knew that within us before we even knew it, because be honest with you, I started off sport, uh, um, a, a business management major. And I was just like, you know how you go into college if you only think in sports, you know, just I'll pick a major. I'll figure it out because I got many. Av- no, that's not how they go. That's another lesson I tell all my kids now to be prepared by ninth, 10th grade on what you want to do. And so I switched over to sport management and, and fell in love with every bit of the process. Like I Absolutely. almost wanted to teach physical education. Then I wanted to be 
a teacher in college and teach this. And then I wanted to do recreation. and be, So I, I love it all. That's why my hat is in more. My hand is in every hat possible. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Basketball, track, football. I put in my hand in anything possible. And I think I over Virginia State that shout out for that as well, because they showed me how great everything comes together. You know, it wasn't segregated. You 100%. Know we 100%. had Coach Moore. Oh, yeah. Man, I, I I love that guy, man. I mean, he taught me how to run. You know, I, I didn't run correct coming into college. And I know you're, you're a speed demon. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you're just fast because of athletic ability. But, I, I, you know, I didn't have any kind of form coming in there, man. That's, hey, bro, that's all that got me by. I ain't even going to sugarcoat it. That's <laughs> <more proper. laughs> Proper running is going to get you through. And then long as you can survive them Dre Moore workouts, I just, I just remember Coach Moore yelling at me, Harris, over the knee. Okay, okay, Coach, I got you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> my man, my man. I love that guy. Look, I'm going to tell you, man, your presence is great. I'm, I'm just happy to have another Trojan close to me in Northern Virginia that I could go and break some bread with and we could chop it up. So absolutely. Anytime, anytime you in that gym during fall ball, no, I'm coming to holler at you. During fall ball, because we'd be there with, I think, Saturdays. And so I know you, you're going to live there because it's football season. I know how it works. Oh, uh, look, 100%, man. And what, if you if you ever get a day off, man, on a Friday, you come out there, let me know, man. You come out to that game. We're going to have to make something happen. Absolutely. We're going to have to make something happen. Well, I appreciate your time for joining us on Commonwealth Sports Talk, my man. Any last words before we let it ride? Hey, thanks for having me, Joe. But I just want to let everybody know, man, Fairfax is coming this year. So we don't want to be we don't want nobody to sleep. We don't want nobody to forget about us. I want everybody to circle us on their schedule because we come. I love that. I love that. That's called I've been in the dungeon and grinding the whole time. So if I take my results, I take my results. Like Absolutely. I want the I best version of behind it. <laughs> my man, my man. Appreciate you, yo. Mm-hmm.